Thank you very much for joining me here today. The migrant crisis in the United States continues to impact major cities like New York, with the most recent incident being a group of migrants robbing Bloomingdale's. NTD's Star Marshall has more. A mob of 10 to 15 migrants simultaneously robbed a Manhattan Bloomingdale's of $5,300 worth of sunglasses. They targeted high-end brands like Versace, Dior, and Prada. As you can see here, the sunglasses department is very close to the entrance, and now so is security. Eyewitnesses reported that some members were speaking Spanish and appeared to be coordinating their actions. The scene was described as chaotic, with the group appearing to display a clear understanding of what they were doing. All but one of them escaped. The police recovered 10 pairs of Versace specs, two pairs of Prada glasses, and one Christian Dior pair. 85% of New York City voters were concerned about the city accommodating the surge of migrants, up from 63% 10 months earlier, according to a Quinnipiac University poll of registered voters in New York City. Mayor Eric Adams continues to plead with the Biden administration for help. But this is a national problem that has only been exacerbated as we need a resolution at the border. And our national leaders must come up with that resolution. The national government has turned its back on New York City. Sean Marshall, NTD News. Taiwan goes to the polls on Saturday to elect a new president and parliament in the shadow of an increasingly assertive China, which has called the vote a choice between peace and war. Here's the story. Taiwanese voters are caught between local policies and Chinese demands ahead of the island's presidential and parliamentary elections this weekend. The ruling Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, is aiming for an unprecedented third term in office. But no matter who wins the elections, security officials say Beijing's military and economic pressure on Taiwan could continue or even increase. Taiwanese artist Chang is among millions of citizens who are expected to go to the polls this Saturday. She is producing tote bags printed with images of the island's shape and promoting the Taiwan identity she is proud of. I really hope that the candidate who can lead Taiwan to be a normalized country can be chosen. Now there are different camps that are perhaps more pro-China or in favor of different ideas. But I really think they have to return to thinking about Taiwan's local issues to be able to do something worthwhile for Taiwan. So why is this election so crucial? China considers Taiwan as its own territory despite the objections of the island's government. Beijing has framed the vote as a choice between war and peace and could hold new military drills around the island no matter who wins. It has never renounced the use of force as an option to bring Taiwan under control. The U.S. will also be watching the election closely as the island has long been a thorny issue in its relations with Beijing. Both major parties in Taiwan say the island is a sovereign country, but offer different views on relations with China. Vice President Lai Qingde, the DPP's presidential candidate, has urged people not to be swayed by threats. But he has also offered talks with Beijing and pledged not to upset the status quo. The opposition Kuomintang calls DPP separatists and staunchly opposes independence. Some voters are deterred by China's pressure. I want peace and for there to be more exchange between Taiwan and China, for example, trade and other collaboration. The DPP says China attempted to sway the election with fake news and military pressure. As Taiwan's presidential election approaches, the frontline island of Kimin finds itself at a critical crossroads. Voters on the island, a symbolically important constituency, are grappling with the impact of their vote on relations with Beijing and the future of the island. Take a look. Most of Taiwan lies around 100 miles from mainland China. 
The island of Kinmen, however, is only a short ferry ride away. Tanks and barricades face the skyscrapers of the Chinese city of Xiamen on the horizon. Kinmen is seen in Taiwan as its furthest outpost of democracy, as well as a symbolically important constituency, which attracts visits from the leadership of all of Taiwan's major political parties. As those campaign efforts pick up ahead of Taiwan's presidential election this week, residents of the island, which relies heavily on spending by Chinese tourists, are wondering how their vote will impact relations with Beijing, and in turn, the future of Kinmen. Kang Biguan is the third generation owner of a stall that sells fish balls, a common street food snack. We hope that during the upcoming elections, the Taiwanese government will consider future developments of Kinmen. We need a stream of people to have a stream of money. Otherwise, for us vendors, including the next generation, we can foresee a lot of hardships. Taiwan has controlled Kinmen since 1949 when the defeated Republic of China government fled to Taipei after losing a civil war with Mao Zedong's communists. Bombarded by hundreds of thousands of shells over decades, the frontline island earned a reputation as the protector of Taiwan. However, over the years, both sides of the water that divides it from mainland China have enjoyed close economic ties. Many families have relatives in both places. The establishment of a 30-minute ferry service in the early 2000s transformed the island into a popular shopping destination for Chinese tourists. Now, both Beijing and Taiwanese opposition party candidates are calling for a bridge between Xiamen and Kinmen, which has divided opinion on the island. While the majority on the island support closer ties, a growing subset of young residents identify more as Taiwanese than Chinese. They want a democratic Kinmen that embraces its own culture and relies less on China. Coffee roastery owner Yuan Zhengjia is one of them. My dream is to use my coffee to bring some of Kinmen's culture and specialties to the world. I think we can create a Kinmen coffee brand so that people can learn more about Kinmen. We can indeed move our market to Southeast Asia, Europe and the US, meaning Taiwan's market will not only be in China. Taiwan should look to the whole world and not only focus on China. In the run-up to the January 13th election, billboards for Taiwan's ruling DPP party and opposition Kuomintang party alike have sprung up around Kinmen. But for some, like bookstore owner Wang Yuwen, voting along party lines matters less than a candidate's vision for the island's future. If the Communist Party wants to attack you, they will not care if you are the KMT or the DPP. This is how I see it. So, based on this, I tend to vote for the candidate of a party that does not want to get closer with China. But if today the party that doesn't propose closer ties with China puts forward a candidate without their own ideas, values or blueprint for the future, then I might gravitate towards not voting at all. China claims it has hacked Apple's airdrop feature to identify users sharing, quote, inappropriate speech. In an online post, China's Judicial Bureau said a Beijing tech company built a tool to breach the anonymous tracking on AirDrop and was able to identify a sender's phone number and email. They didn't specify the nature of the message that started the investigation. Some international media outlets has reported that AirDrop had been used to anonymously spread pictures and leaflets by demonstrators in China, especially in the last months of 2022. In a rare protest against Chinese leader Xi Jinping, Meanwhile, U.S. stocks closed higher on Wednesday as mega caps rallied, with the session's gains leaving the S&P 500 just 0.27% away from its record close set on January 3, 2022. Here's a quick recap of markets. U.S. stocks closed higher on Wednesday, but gains were limited ahead of inflation reports and major bank earnings later in the week. The Dow gained just under half a percent. The S&P 500 added nearly six-tenths, and the Nasdaq rose three-quarters of a percent. Mega-cap tech stocks provided the biggest boost to the S&P 500, with shares of meta platforms jumping more than 3.5 percent, the stock reaching its highest level since September 2021. NVIDIA, which rose more than 2 percent, hit a record high after fellow chipmaker TSMC beat fourth-quarter revenue expectations. Mark Lushini is chief investment strategist at Janney Capital Management.
we're seeing a rotation back into some of last year's leadership with the names uh, that propagate communication services, technology, consumer discretionary, really taking the lead. Uh, not surprising, uh, obviously iconic brands that uh, are expected to, del to deliver pretty good earnings, uh, which we're about to embark on here for fourth quarter. Um, and in an environment that really hasn't changed a whole lot that uh, facilitated why they were among the leaders last year, which is to say kind of steady state economic activity. Shares of Boeing rose nearly 1% after tumbling the prior two sessions. CEO Dave Calhoun on Tuesday acknowledged errors by the U.S. plane maker as more than 170 jets remain grounded for a fourth day due to safety concerns. DuckGo plunged more than 37 percent after Fuzzy Panda Research revealed a short position on the health services company's stock. Wednesday marked a watershed moment for Bitcoin as the SEC approved the first U.S.-listed exchange-traded funds to track the world's largest cryptocurrency. Investors are awaiting the December consumer and producer inflation reports due on Thursday and Friday, respectively, which could help determine the Federal Reserve's monetary policy path. And on Friday, the unofficial start of earnings season kicks off with banking giants J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citigroup and Wells Fargo. All are expected to report lower fourth quarter profits. And now just a quick update on CPI. U.S. consumer prices came in hotter than expected in December. Year over year, the consumer price index rose 3.4 percent. This is an increase from November's report. And month over month, it rose 0.3 percent. It's also an increase from last month. The cost of shelter accounted for more than half of the increase in the CPI. Uh, these are not bad numbers, but they do show that disinflation progress is still slow and unlikely to be a straight line down to 2 percent. And at the same time, the slightly higher CPI suggests that the Federal Reserve probably won't be in a rush to cut interest rates. And for many people, a new year means setting new financial goals. It's important to understand the economic outlook for 2024 before making any big purchases. So here are some of the ways of how inflation and prices could impact you. As we kick off 2024, the question for many consumers is how inflation will impact their wallet this year. There are a variety of indicators which show how the economy is doing, like the recent report that showed 216,000 jobs were added in December. The cost of goods is still high and interest rates remain high, which means if you're looking to buy a house or car this year, the cost to borrow that money will be more. And it doesn't look like those numbers will come down anytime soon. Well, the Fed won't start talking about when they're going to cut rates. Market expectations are now forming that we'll see an interest rate cut in the middle of 2024. If you are in the market to buy a home or car this year, experts say start getting your finances in order now. Check your credit reports. Monitor your credit score. If you can, save 20% down payment. Review home buying assistance programs. And lastly, pay down your other consumer debt. The good news is that financial experts predict interest rates for homes and cars will likely come down before the Fed makes any changes. Interest rates on mortgages and automobiles will begin coming down well in advance of that, and they already are. Inflation has moderated from its peak, but prices are still putting severe pressure on families. Fed officials recently forecasted that it will be actually years before inflation reaches its 2% target. In November, the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge, their Personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index, measured 2.6%. But Fed officials are predicting it will take two more years to get it to a firm 2%. Economists are noting several sticky areas that are less responsive to changes in the market. One of the stickiest is housing. The Consumer Price Index has housing prices up more than 5% for the 12 months ending in November. Service costs are also up in the same time period. One economist said the biggest barrier to the 2% target is actually government spending. The U.S. Securities Regulator on Wednesday approved the first U.S.-listed exchange-traded funds to track Bitcoin. This is according to its chair, Gary Gensler. This is a watershed moment for the world's largest cryptocurrency and the broader crypto industry. Here are the details. A game changer in the world of cryptocurrency. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on Wednesday approved the first ever spot Bitcoin ETFs. 
giving institutional and retail investors exposure to the world's largest cryptocurrency without directly holding it. The funds, from asset managers including BlackRock, Fidelity, and ARK Investments and 21 Shares, among others, track Bitcoin's spot price in real time. Until now, only futures-based Bitcoin ETFs have been available. Some products are expected to begin trading as early as Thursday. The new funds are a major boost to an industry beset by a string of scandals, most notably the collapse of crypto exchange FTX and the conviction on fraud charges of its founder, Sam Bankman-Fried. Ben Laidler is global market strategist at eToro. So I think it's a, another key step forward in the development of what is still by far the youngest, smallest, and most retail investor dominated of all the asset classes. And it's happening in what is by far the world's biggest uh, capital market. Let's just recognize this is just one of what I think is a long laundry list of potential asset class catalysts this year. I mean, next up, we would have the Ethereum spot ETF decision, and then we move on to the April Bitcoin halving, on and on, any one of which I think is important uh, in the context of what is still a very small asset class. The green light from the SEC comes after a false start the day prior. Industry insiders and media outlets were caught off guard Tuesday evening when an unknown party posted on the SEC's X account that all the ETF products had been approved, sending investment executives scrambling to figure out what was happening. The SEC quickly disavowed and deleted the post and said authorities are investigating the incident. X confirmed late on Tuesday that the SEC's account was hacked. Bitcoin has gained more than 70 percent in recent months on the expectation ETFs for the asset would be approved. It was trading upwards of $46,000 on Wednesday. Standard Chartered analysts this week said the ETFs could draw $50 billion to $100 billion this year alone, driving the price of Bitcoin as high as $100,000. U.S. bank profits are being squeezed as they set aside money to cover troubled loans and pay off customers. Banking giants are expecting to report lower profits for the fourth quarter as they have reserved more money to prepare for customers defaulting on loans and to pay more to depositors to keep money in their accounts. Goldman Sachs analysts say the difference between what they earn on loans and pay out on deposits probably fell on average of 10% in the fourth quarter. And the Biden administration announces more than $620 million for new electric vehicle charging stations across the country. The money will go to fund 47 projects in 22 states and Puerto Rico. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg says it will result in 7,500 new charging ports as well as EV and hydrogen fueling facilities for freight trucks in busy corridors. The funding comes from the bipartisan infrastructure law. Right now, there's about 170,000 EV chargers on America's roads. President Biden's goal is to have 500,000 by the end of the decade. Netflix's ad-supported tier has hit more than 23 million monthly active users. That's an increase of about 8 million in roughly two months. Netflix launched its ad-based plan in the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK, and several other countries in 2022. The standard plan with ads costs $6.99 a month in the U.S. The ads range from 10 to 60 seconds. In an October 2023 letter to shareholders, Netflix said it's optimistic about the long-term growth of its ads planned membership. Meanwhile, Japan's fast retailing said on Thursday that strong overseas sales drove a 25 percent rise in first quarter operating profit as the Uniqlo operator charts a third straight year of record earnings. Here's the report. Japan's fast retailing could be on track for another year of record earnings. The Uniqlo operator said Thursday first quarter operating profit rose 25 percent due to strong overseas sales. Profit hit just over $1 billion in the three months through November, well up on a year before and ahead of analyst forecasts. Uniqlo's business did well in mainland China, where it saw a big rise in revenue and profit over Q1. Stores there came back to life after more than two years of health crisis-related lockdowns. Fast retailing also saw operating income almost double in the US last year. The company has scored record earnings in the past three years, 
as it pressed an aggressive growth strategy overseas. And it projects another record profit in 2024, holding its full year operating forecast at about $3 billion. But climate change could prove an issue for a company known for its quick rollout of seasonal items. Last year was the hottest on record, with unusually warm conditions from September to December, threatening sales of winter wear. Shares of fast retailing soared close to a third in 2023 and rose over 2% on Thursday. Walmart has unveiled a new AI-powered tool for shoppers at this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Walmart combined its shopper data with Microsoft's AI model so shoppers can now search with descriptions instead of individually for items. For example, shoppers can look up Super Bowl watch party and get a list of related items. The AI feature is currently available on iOS and it's going to be rolled out to its website and Android users later this year. And another feature, still in development though, would populate frequently ordered items into shopping carts. Argentina and the International Monetary Fund finalized an agreement over the country's embattled $44 billion loan program, and it's unlocking a more than expected $4.7 billion, the fund said on Wednesday. Here's the story. Argentina and the International Monetary Fund have struck a deal to rescue the country's embattled debt program. The agreement should unlock around $4.7 billion in funding. Economy Minister Luis Caputo spoke after the deal was reached. I want to make clear this is not a new agreement. We have relaunched the previous one, which was on hold due to the goals not being fulfilled. Agreement was urgently needed. Argentina is battling inflation heading towards 200% and is short of foreign currency reserves. Meanwhile, the IMF loans had been on hold after the previous government missed economic targets linked to the program. The new administration of Libertarian President Javier Millet had been locked in talks with the fund since late last week. Caputo welcomed the agreement, but also said Argentina shouldn't rely on it. Es hora que, eh, el país resuelva sus problemas. It's time the country solves its financial problems by solving, as I said at the beginning of this address, its structural problems, which are its addition to the excess of public expenditure and fiscal deficit, as this is what ends up generating all the problems suffered by society. For now, the IMF deal looks like a timely win for Millet, who faces daunting economic challenges. He came to power promising to cut spending, slash bureaucracy and free up business. But his program of deregulation is proving divisive on the streets and in Congress, where he lacks the majority needed to drive through reforms. Hundreds of thousands of people faced train cancellations across Germany from Wednesday as a three-day nationwide rail strike added to travel chaos in Europe's largest economy. Here's the story. Thousands faced train cancellations across Germany from Wednesday as a three-day nationwide rail strike began. The GDL Train Drivers Union started its main strike in the early hours, while cargo train drivers walked out Tuesday evening. The long-running row over train driver pay and working hours flared up again following a three-week truce over Christmas. The union wants a reduced working week for its shift workers from 38 to 35 hours on current wages. National Rail Operator Deutsche Bahn has offered flexibility on working hours but refused to reduce them without a pay cut. Klaus Roselski is head of Germany's GDL Train Drivers Union. We're demanding a staggered reduction in weekly working hours with compensation equalisation. Deutsche Bahn argues the union's demands would lead to a 50% hike in staffing costs. The strikes have forced the train operator to run only stripped back emergency timetables. Anja Brücke is a Deutsche Bahn spokesperson. The strike by the train drivers union GDL has had a massive impact on train services in Germany, both passenger and freight. We've had to take a massive number of trains off the tracks. According to an emergency plan, we've been running around 20% of our passenger services since 2am. 
The trade strikes add more travel chaos in Europe's largest economy, which is also dealing with protests by farmers over subsidy cuts. Convoys of tractors blocked roads earlier this week and affected traffic. And thank you for watching NTD Business. That's all the stories we have for you today. See you soon.